Okay, all right, it was a bit of a saga, but I finally got done with Ultimate Alliance. Now I just gotta figure out what to review next. Say pap napkins. Welcome back to another April Fool's Day special here at Wayne is Boss, and also our 3,000 subscriber special. And I guess to celebrate, today the evil spirit that keeps dropping off stuff at my house left me with these, the Burger King Game Trilogy. These were a collection of interactive advertisements, I guess we'll call them, developed by Blitz Games. They don't exactly have the most robust catalog of games under their belt, but they've got a couple of memorable entries like Fusion Frenzy and Pac-Man World 3. These three games, Big Bumpin', Pocket Bite Racer, and Sneak King were originally supposed to be smaller titles released solely on the Xbox Live Arcade Store, but the decision was later made to release them physically in Burger King restaurants. From what I can remember, you could either get them bundled with a meal or you could buy copies for like four or five bucks each. They were released in that transition period between the original Xbox and the Xbox 360. Technically, they're all just original Xbox games that were given backwards compatibility, but the way the box art was put together made it look like it was more catered towards the new generation hardware. Well, I'm sure talking a lot about the background of these games, but they're still a burning question. Are they good? Eh. Let's start with Big Bumpin', mostly because I think it's the easiest one to sum up. It's bumper cars. I mean, yeah, there's a couple of different ways they try to shake things up with alternate modes and such. Here's a mode where you play Hot Potato. This meter will hang over your head, and when it depletes, it explodes, causing damage. Bump it to other cars to pass it along, and don't be the last one with it. There's also mini games like having to run to the end of the track, grab a thing, take it back to the beginning, and earn points. And the obvious King of the Hill style mini game, where you try to bump other players into pits, off the map, or into saws coming out of the wall. Feels like we escalated a little bit on that one. You know, actually, I like to think that this whole game is just a creepy, saw-like torture game where these Burger King mascots and poor, helpless employees are being forced to fight to the death under the winds of the deranged king. Actually, the opening menu alone kind of backs that up now that I think about it. For one thing, this main menu is shot in live action and responds kind of like a DVD menu, which is already unnerving. Like, I wasn't expecting this real footage of the king greeting me when I booted up the game. What's more, it's kind of creepy? Like, there's no music or anything, there's just this desolate carnival theme going on here, which I find really unsettling as the king just kind of sits there. And what is with these sound effects? I mean, listen to the sounds the game makes when you select stuff. It sounds like something out of Silent Hill. Maybe this really is just some, like, elaborate way of showing the true nature of Burger King. What kind of greasy, deep-fried skeletons have they got in their closet over there? You know, I really feel like we should be looking into this further. I mean... Okay, well, I guess while I wait for the killer sandwich to leave, I might as well look at the next game on the list. Pocket Bike Racer. Oh, lovely. Another live-action menu screen. It's still weird, but not as unsettling as the last one, that's for sure. I mean, I'll give the games this. They do a good job of capturing just that odd tone that the old Burger King ads had. They were always sort of surreal for the most part, and so many of them just had the king there, staring, silent. He knows something we don't, and maybe it's something we're not meant to know. No, but for real, these commercials are just weird as hell. Now, the King himself is obviously a playable character in all three of these titles, but Big Bump and Pocket Bite Racer do also have these other characters to choose from, like Whopper Jr., Winston, the underpaid drive through cashier, Christina, preparing to deal with another terrible customer, um, biker? There's also an appearance from Brooke Burke? Gotta be honest, I had no idea who this was until I googled her, and I'm still wondering why she of all people was forced to be forever tied to these games. I think my favorite out of the bunch, though, is this guy. The subservient chicken. I mean, just look at him. This is absurd. Wait, he was actually part of a real Burger King ad campaign? What is going on over there, Burger King? I mean, I'm also a slave to my work, so I can relate, bro. I'll stick with you. To my surprise, I actually don't hate this. There's a kind of fun novelty to all these grown adult racers sitting on these tiny little 
pocket bike zipping around through these courses, but it's also sort of fun. Well, for a little bit anyway. I mean, there's really not much to this game. There's only five tracks in the entire game for starters, so things start looking kind of samey pretty quick, but it's functional, the frame rate stays pretty consistent, and I actually think this boost meter function the game has going is pretty neat. Like in most kart racers, you can obtain items to use as weapons against other opponents. Now, instead of just hitting a box and getting the item out of it, you instead have to drive between sets of traffic cones with colored lights between them. This will help fill up your boost meter, which will give you access to a particular item you can use depending on how full that meter is, or you can use what you've gained as a quick boost of speed instead. I actually think this is a pretty good mechanic. It gives the player the option to choose between a rocket that they can fire at an opposing racer to get an edge, or sacrifice that weapon to gain some quick speed instead, which can also be useful when trying to make jumps. It's not all perfect, though. I guess something like this was gonna have to even its way back out somehow, but some of these power-ups are just obnoxious. I'm not talking about the ray beam that reverses your controls. No, stuff like that's fine. I'm talking about this flashbang that just envelops the entire screen in a sudden void of white nothingness. I'm not even gonna play that at full screen, because it's needlessly harsh on the eyes, and I don't hate my viewers. The other issue that I have springs up from the other modes. The game has a battle mode, a mode where running between cones nets you points, and then a mode where there's no beast meter to fall back on. It's just good driving and drifting skills to get you through. I actually don't have an issue with that last one, the hardcore racing mode. I like that idea. No, the problem is with the battle and points modes, mainly in that they still reuse the same exact five tracks as the races, with not a lot of thought put into balancing these stages for snappier gameplay. When your only means of getting weapons to hit your opponents with is by running through these cones spread out all across the track with the other racers all driving all over the place, these can take forever to get through. It also doesn't help that the higher speed races you unlock by completing tournaments basically breaks the game, where it's almost impossible to make proper turns given how fast you're going, which will sometimes lead you through an unintentional shortcut that sends you halfway through the racetrack right at the start. But the game still registers you as being behind all the other racers because I guess you didn't pass them within a certain proximity, so being ahead of everyone actually puts you at a disadvantage. Well, I started off kind of liking this one, but of course it all just had to fall apart at the end. I would normally call it quits here, but for... reasons... It looks like I'm gonna be stuck in here for a little bit longer, so I guess I might as well just show off the last game in the trio. Out of these three games, it seems like people remember Sneak King the most, and yeah, I can sort of see why. I think it's got the most unique concept out of these three, and falls pretty in line with the commercials. The king needs to deliver food to the hungry people. That is actually the entire game. Think I'm skipping out on some details? Think you're missing some deep lore? Nah, dude, that is really it. Run around these four areas, sneaking around so people don't spot you and surprise them with food. Burgers, breakfast, chicken fries, normal fries, coffee, mud. Each area in the game has 20 missions to complete. Finish about 10 of them or so, and you can move on to the next area. I'm really glad this game doesn't make you do all 20 in a stage, because man, Sneak King just feels like padding in and of itself. You can sneak behind people to deliver them food and press the A button again when the meter pops up to determine how much flourish you offer this mayonnaise-infested slop with. No, but seriously, like, half these burgers are just mayo and ketchup. The people in these levels have an indicator above their heads to show when they're hungry, and that burger symbol will glow different colors depending on how close they are to pad passing out from hunger. Yes, these people are so malnourished that just walking around in their own neighborhood will cause them to become so hungry that they just collapse on the ground right in front of you. Listen, your majesty, I know you got a whole shtick going on here, but these people don't need a double whopper with cheese, they need water and food that won't clog their arteries before they can even reach the bathroom. Now, the hungry citizens of this fast food hellscape have a very limited field of view, meaning that even if you're right in front of them, they will not see you unless you pass through this thin blue field of vision. They will, however, hear you coming from a mile away if you dare to break into the laziest running animation I've ever seen in an interactive torture device. Uh, g game. I meant, uh, game. Yeah, that. Try to move even a little bit quicker than this sneak animation and your feet will cause tremors across the land the likes of which would make Godzilla jealous cause it will give your position away instantly. Stay quiet, wait until the person you're about to feed is right on the brink of starvation, use maximum flourish and use a hiding spot if you can in order to rack up a lot of points and the more deliveries you make without being noticed by anybody will build your chain meter, thus netting you more points on delivery. Better master all this stuff quick too because it's about all you're doing in this game. Sometimes there will be 
be missions focused on finding a bunch of hiding spots or actually being seen by people, just kind of break things up a little bit. But for 90% of the game, these missions have no instruction for you beyond delivering food to people. Sometimes it's with a time limit, sometimes it's with flourish stipulations, there's even a mission where you have to deliver food specifically to women because I guess the king is just that kind of guy, and sometimes you have to use a limited amount of deliveries to accumulate a high score of points. I don't even know if there's anything else to say. Honestly, I think I actually preferred Pocket Bike Racer because while that game certainly had its own set of issues, I still ultimately had more fun with the gameplay there versus Sneak King, which is like a constantly cycling episode of the Twilight Zone where I'm stuck delivering terrible food to people for all eternity. It is memorable. I mean, oh boy, will I never forget this one. And it's not even like it's all that bad. It's just a perfectly framed picture of redundancy and I think I've played enough of it for now. I don't know who stuck me with reviewing these Burger King games, but I hope you got what you're looking for. As for me, I've got other projects to work on, so I think first I'm gonna go for a walk or something, get some fresh air, clear my head, and until next time, I'll see you next mission. Wait a minute. Walk me! Walk me! Walk me! Hey there everyone and thank you so much for watching. I had a ton of fun putting this one together. I had the idea to put together the April Fool's Day video this year with the Burger King games for a while now. I'm not entirely sure when it first popped into my head, but uh, it's kind of been in the back burner for for a bit now, so it was fun finally getting to uh, to see this through and put it together. Not sure what I'm doing next year, but uh, well, think of something. As for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the next video. Uh, I'm not gonna reveal what that's gonna be just yet. Uh, I, it's not one that I think a lot of people have played. I think there's enough people that have played it, so it's not exactly that obscure or anything, but it's one that I've always wanted to try out, and uh, I'm excited to finally give it a look and uh, we'll see how I like uh, this and its sequel. And of course, as always, I would not be able to do any of this without you guys, without all of my supporters, viewers, everything like that. Thank you guys so much. You, you are the ones that uh, keep me doing all of this. And of course, as always, I want to give a very special shout out to my top tier patrons. The current top tier patrons right now are Patricia Marcoux, Christine Larkin, Earl Valco, Nicholas Morgan, Jacob Riley, Wonton Photo, and Cirrus the Skeptic. Thank you guys so, so much. From the bottom of my heart, you all make it possible and you make it worth it. With all of that said, I've got some work to do. I have been Wayne, Wappy is a very evil little burger, and Burger King is now never going to sponsor me. Alright, peace. <laughs>